Hi guys. I know a few of you had issues again and I'm going to just keep keep recording these and posting them. So we started off with attendance and we did it in four minutes. So we are getting even quicker. Then we moved to brain pop and we focused on character. So we talked about how just in life, when we see a person based on their actions and what they say, we kind of have an idea of who they are and what they are as a person or maybe how they're feeling. So we talked about how we do that in a story as well. So I showed a brain pop on character. And in that brain pop, it talked about how characters also can change from the beginning to the end of a story. I will put that link in the comment section so uh, your student can watch the character brain pop video. We then used Sarah from First Aid Jitters because we're going to focus on that story with a lot of our um, a lot of our topics. And I will also put, again, the read aloud link on YouTube to First Aid Jitters in the comments. I will show just an example of a couple of what we did throughout the story. So we read through it, or I read to them, and I had them tell me to stop. If we came to anything that Sarah said or did because we are analyzing Sarah. So I will turn that to document camera. <clears throat> and to jot down our ideas on Sarah, we pulled out whoop, week two third grade language arts. So the yellow packet is what they need. I'm gonna just flip right to it, but this is the character analysis and they need to write Sarah on top because we're gonna do another one on Mr. Hartwell tomorrow. So I will put this under and you can pause it please whenever if you need to catch up. So we wrote Sarah on the top and then we read each page and we said, when I asked, did Sarah do or say anything? And they would tell me yes or no. On the first page, it's Mr. Hartwell talking. So we moved to the second page. Oh, Sarah says, I'm not going, and pulled the covers over her head. So they had me stop. And the verb was pulled. So we underlined verb. Well, what did she do? She pulled the covers over her head. We then talked about dialogue. This is so important. At home, if you could, you know, talk about dialogue or use quotes when, um, you're reading in your story and they see quotation marks. So we'll go like this, dialogue. Because they are going to have to write quotes in their stories eventually in third grade. So we talked about how it is capitalized. The first letter is always capitalized inside a quote. And the punctuation goes inside the quote. Right here, it's a comma. We are just doing shorthand, so we added a period. So she said, I'm not going, going, and a quotation marks. We also talk about how bullet points do not need to be a complete sentence. So that's why we don't want periods. And we talked about, okay, she pulled the cover over her head. She said she's not going. So we have to think, what does she think or feel? Well, she's probably nervous or scared. We did this for every single page. And I'll just show the second one, just show another example. So we read, we read, and she goes, and someone said, yes, she tunneled down to the end of the bed, and she said all of this. No, I'm not. I don't want to start over again. I hate my new school. So we put tunneled to the end of bed. That's the verb. And we shortened it. We just said, I hate my new school, because that is probably a, the strongest sentence that in, within her dialogue, that she hates her new school. That means she doesn't want to go. So we did that for every page. We wrote down what she did and we wrote down what she said. Then that leads us to infer. To infer is you use clues within a story. It may not tell you flat out have a complete sentence about what they're thinking, what they're feeling. So inferring means using all the clues in the story to come up with an inference. 
So they helped me come up with, well, she is nervous, shy, scared about her new school. It could even be about the first day of school at her new school. So this is what they came up and they inferred about, which was really, really, really good. So I will leave this right here if you need to pause. Oops. Okay. We moved on to grammar. We went through this fairly quickly because it's just big review from second. And so a lot of it was homework. So it's found in their week two third grade grammar. Their grammar is gray. We talked about commands. So I had some people share, like, what would your parents tell you? They're not asking you, they're telling you to do something. And they came up with clean your room, do the dishes. Um, they came up with a lot. I can't think of other ones, but they were really good. So we discussed that. And then we, again, you have, I want them to always dissect the directions. So we are, the verb is circle. So we're in a circle, the sentences that give a command. And we went through them. Give me that book. They told me yes or no. And I circled and we went through. And then seven through 12 is homework. So that's what they're going to do at home. Then we moved into exclamation point and exclamation marks. Again, dissect the directions. And all of them, you put an exclamation at the mark. So I had them unmute and we all yelled out and exclaimed all these statements and we put an exclamation. Their homework is to write a sentence that needs an exclamation point. They need at least six words in their sentence, at least six. We also talked about how some of these are commands, but it's different. It could be, don't touch it, a command, or it could be, don't touch it. You're exclaiming. So it's your change of tone of voice. This is a huge one, period. And question marks. A lot of students still struggle with a question. I may say, do you have a question? And they put a question in the chat box and they say, my dog is really cute. You know, that's not a question. That's just a statement. So we practiced and went over it. And they would tell us, tell me, they would put a question mark in the chat box or a period to tell me which one. So we did that for all these. And then they need to finish for homework. We watched a growth mindset video, and I will put that in the chat box as well, or in the co comment section of the video. And then we worked on our emoji paragraph. So I explained to them, you know, how frustrating it is for me because in person, I would give these directions, and then I would walk around to every single one of them and help them with their specific paragraph. Um, so I tried to tell them, you know, Please put a question mark if you have a question, and we'll go over yours individually. So check their work to see if maybe they were shy and they didn't want to say something. But this is still in their week one. They will still need their week one for a while until they, we finish their paragraph. So week one, third grade language arts. Their T-chart right here should already be completed. And so what we talked about was their topic sentence. It should already be written out. They're not writing what I write. I'm, they're using my writing to guide them with their information on the paper. So I wrote my topic sentence. I feel nervous, patient, and happy for the first day of school. I underlined it in green because that's our topic sentence. Then we talked about the yellow, you know, means slow down a little bit. And we just focused on our first detail. So nervous was mine. And I told them I want them just to copy me as far as my transition word. So first I felt. I want them to write that. And then their own emotion. That first emotion they'll write. And they'll underline it in yellow. Then the elaborating, the red is, okay, we're stopping. We're writing a lot more to explain our detail. I told them they don't have to write everything that they put here because this is just where they have ideas. 
and they maybe don't like that idea anymore, so they don't have to use it. So I put, I first I felt nervous because of teaching online. All I did was put because right here and switched it up. So I finished my sentence. The can't be face to face, I of course I do not like, but I was worried, nervous about the technology that wouldn't work. I told them that they do not need to add another sentence for red, but they can if they want, and I did. And I put, what if the technology doesn't work? So just showing my nerves. And I underlined both. It could, even though it's once in the same sentence, this is the elaborating. I underlined both in red. They need to do this for, for today. That's their homework is just finishing the first yellow and the first red and coloring the green, yellow, and red. We moved on to math. And on the whiteboard back here, I had, it's probably still here. Uh, it's on there a little bit. We practiced expanded form. So I give them a number and they'd have to give it to me in expanded form. So like 221, it would be 200 plus 20 plus one. Then we moved on to adding. Adding expanded form. And you can't see too, too well because it kind of got um, erased. But I gave them a few problems. So this was just one of them. So we have 738, 261. And that is standard form. And they had to write 738 into expanded, 261 into expanded, and then they added it down. Once they add it, they need to put it back into standard form which just happened to be I made up this number, 999. And then they put the answer over here. So 738 plus 261 is 999. We did that a few times. And then we moved on to the homework. So I got them started. And then they had to finish on their own. This is important. So pause here if their paper doesn't look like mine. The first is fill in the missing numbers in the box. And then the second is I had them erase it. So write in word form on the line. So I want them to practice word form. So we did the first together. So 600 plus 10, 610. Then 346, they wrote 346. And they're gonna finish this. And at the bottom, we added a problem for adding expanded. This is really important. Please have them practice that. The next sheet is just extra practice as far as expanded. So they need to write each in expanded form. Over here, there is no tens. There's no value in the tens place, just zero. So they don't need to put 900 plus zero plus four. They can just put 900 plus four. Standard form, so we want to change the expanded into standard. And that is their math homework. We watched a brain pop on Johnny Appleseed, and we talked about him and why he was a significant person. And I will put that link in the comment section as well. From there, I wanted them to focus more on a poem, doing a poem on their own. They already created a poem about themselves. And so now they're going to create a poem about an apple, just in honor of Johnny Appleseed. So that is found in week two, third grade writing on the first page. We did these together. They need to finish it for homework. That's their homework. We did apple adjectives, so words to describe apples. And it could be taste, what they look like, anything. Nouns. So I wanted this to be more personal as far as when they think of apples. Do they think of any type of people, places, or things about apples? Verbs. What can apples do? What can we do with apples? And I told them just to get creative. We're just practicing. The main point is we want to practice verbs and understanding 
the difference between verbs and nouns. And then elaborate. So who can you eat an apple with? When can you eat an apple? Where can you eat an apple? So again, just be creative and finish this. Um, I also want them, I explained it yesterday, but I'll explain all their homework. In week one, third grade activities blue, they need to create a portrait of themselves. This is important because whenever they turn this in in a couple weeks, they're also going to turn in their biography poem that we did. I haven't had them type it yet, but that will be coming. And I'm going to print them out and put it on a construction paper next to each other. So this is something they need to work on at home. And then they need to read for 30 minutes. And that is their homework for today. All right, thank you so much. Oh, pause. Some students wanted me to put the brain. So we talked about our brain. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because some couldn't see. So we yesterday we did the cerebrum and the prefrontal cortex. Today we did the cerebellum and they moved and I said, well, you just use your cerebellum. The hippocampus is their long-term memory. So right here, full funky. This one gives me tongue tied. The amygdala is right here. And that is your feelings and your emotions. So just like inside out, I use as an example. They were part of the amygdala. <laughs> And also for homework is, can you please take a picture of your student's brain and send it to me? And then I'll get, that's how I'll give them credit for participating in this activity. All right. Now that is it. Thank you so much.